second week in September 2023 and I'm out in the woods looking for fungi. It's been very hot over the last week but in, where is it now? Tuesday on Saturday night it rained a lot, on Sunday it rained a lot, on Monday it rained a little bit and the temperature dropped. So I'm, I'm out in the woods kind of hoping to find some decent fungi and I'm absolutely gutted that I've missed these fellas. Check this out. Now all of these are horn of plenty. They've obviously come up before the rain. The rain has come and absolutely knackered them. And we've got some there, we've got some under here. We've got a nation of them under there. We've got them over here or over there as well. Yes, over there. They're all over this bank side. I'm too late for them. So many of them here, it's unbelievable. But what I've come to realize over the last few years of fungi hunting is that the south facing valley sides mature first. So they're probably two or three weeks ahead of the north facing bank sides. This one is a south facing bank side. So I can almost guarantee you on that other side, which you can't really see through the trees there, that will be full of horn of plenty in about two or three weeks. They're always a few weeks behind. That's such a major bummer. I've discovered an awesome place for Horn of Plenty. Would have more than filled my little basket, just within the space of maybe 20 square meters, but I'm about a week too late. I can't believe I didn't stumble across this last week. I must have just missed it. Okay, this one's looking a little bit more promising. Yes, very good. Hedgehog fungus, you can tell it's hedgehog fungus because it's got all these little spines on the inside of here. See them there? Yeah. That's not bad, not bad at all. And I reckon these ones are looking pretty good as well. Yes, they are. That's looking beautiful. Look at that man, absolutely beautiful. Perfect. That's really nice. Yes. And instead of putting them in the basket all dirty and cleaning them up later, I like to clean them up on site. Because all these little bits and all the little bits of muck that you're wiping off are going to go into the ground and they're going to help to spread the mycelium even further. So I would always advise cleaning everything up on site. If they're really heavily soiled it's best just to strip it off with a knife. Don't bother with a brush. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Look at that man. Look at that man. The colours of that. It's almost like a freshly baked bun. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at that fella in there. Absolutely lovely. Lovely. Oh. Ah, I love doing this. I absolutely love it. You know, you're outside, you're getting fresh air, you're getting a bit of exercise, you're harvesting things like this which are so nutritious and so good for you. And if you can't eat them all in one day, you can just dry them out. Absolutely amazing. You know, this really is nature's bounty. She's providing us things for free. Food that is more nutritious than any crap you can buy in a supermarket. And it's free. It doesn't cost anything. All it costs is a little bit of knowledge and time to go out and look for it. And in here, just for reference, we've got a few hazel trees, we've got oak trees, we've got silver birch, and we've got beech. It's basically a hardwood forest. You could probably class it as ancient woodland. And there's a lot of wood rush, which is all this stuff on the ground behind me. That 
more or less carpeting the whole place. Uh, yeah, oak, beech, wood rush, you can't go wrong. It's always going to have a lot of good fungi. Now this little trail that I'm following is cut in by deer. And the bank side is probably at least a 45 degree slope. And it goes all the way along the side of there, like up and down, up and down. <laughs> I'm 50, reasonably fit. But if you were a little bit older or not as fit, then you may have trouble getting to where I'm going next. <laughs> okay, so I'm approaching one of my favorite bank sides, probably only about 80 meters long, maybe 25 meters tall, north facing, very dark, full of leaf litter, and already I can see some hedgehog fungus up here. It's a very dark, damp, reasonably cold, shaded place. Look at all the moss, you know, the fungi absolutely love it here. And there's another hedgehog fungus. Now, just to the left of us here, just along this little dark, dirty bank side, I must have probably had five or six kilos of hedgehog fungus just from this little bit here last year. It was absolutely lifting with them. But it was a little bit later than it is now, so I presume they're coming. Yeah, they are coming, yep. See, little ones popping up here. So we've definitely got something going on here. Maybe it's another three or four days and this bankside will be heaving with them. Oh, really nice, very nice. These ones, I've probably got to climb down there and access them from the stream. But it's a little bank side here, almost vertical, which is full of hedgehog fungus. And we've got a couple more up here. Yeah, we've got a few more on the bank side as well. Yeah, you can see all the little shavings that I've made there by cleaning up those pretty big hedgehog fungus that I got from here. All of that will have mycelium in it that'll spread out and it'll cover this whole bank side, you know. Every time you clean something up on site, you're spreading it. And I think with regard to these ones, they're pretty small. I'll leave them until later in the week. I did take a few, so our basket is looking pretty good so far. Likewise with these ones, we've got two or three, which are pretty small. Oh, that one's actually broken off. Yep, might just clean that one up and take it actually. But there's two or three around here that are pretty small. One which is decent. I'll take the decent one and I'll leave the small ones. Two or three days later, these ones will be big beasts. Doesn't take them long to grow at all. Especially when the weather's good. You know, the weather is going to be about 15, 16 degrees Celsius for the next three or four days at least. And on a night, it's going to be about 10 to 11, possibly dropping down into single digits up in the hills, which is where I am. And that's absolutely perfect for the autumn harvest. So in the next few weeks, I'm expecting a bumper crop of all sorts. Look at that, man. Awesome. And if anybody's interested, I will put the link to that knife and all this other gear in the video description and in the pinned comment. And just for reference, this place is North Facing and it's comprised mostly of beech and oak with a little bit of holly thrown in. Basically another ancient woodland. And look at all this leaf litter, you know. I mean, it's in the shade, so it never gets any sun on it. And in the back end of the year, it's absolutely lifting with fungi on here. You know, the amount of horn of plenty and seps that we had last year was incredible. I probably picked about 10 kilos of seps just off this little bank side. Do you know, the strange thing is, this bank side in mid to late September was absolutely heaving with all sorts of fungi. We found at least five or six different edible types here and we filled baskets numerous times over. At the present moment, there's nothing here absolutely nout, apart from down in the bottom there, 
the other little stream where there was those few hedgehog fungus. Give it two or three weeks and this bank side will be alive. So it's, it's one of those things, you know, it's very difficult when you come and scope out a place because you might look at somewhere that's perfect, but you might be three or four days too early and there'd be nothing there, literally nothing. And you'll think, nah, this is crap this, I won't bother coming back. If you'd come a week later, you would think, oh my God, this is the best place on earth. You know, so trying to, trying to predict what is gonna pop up and where is, well, it's like a sort of alchemy. <laughs> it's so difficult to do, you know, but mid-September, if we get a little bit of dry weather, followed by a little bit of rain, you can guarantee that somewhere in your local woods, if the hardwood forests, there will be some fungi. In the fields, it's a little bit more unpredictable because the farmers are spreading all sorts of crap on the fields. And well, actually, it's not even crap. If it was natural crap, there would probably be fungi all over the place, but it's like artificial fertilizers and shite. Well, it's not even shite. Shite is crap. Crap comes from cows and, yeah. As I'm standing talking, there's a squirrel about 15 yards away from me. Just going about its business. I'll see if I can get it on film. Grey squirrels, proper tree rats. Ah, you know, back in the day, I used to come into these woods with my family at this time of year, and we would harvest a big basket full of nuts. And now there's just absolutely nout. There's, the grey squirrels just strip the trees before they're even ready, bury them all, and... <laughs> They leave nothing for us. Right, so here's just a random spot underneath a load of beech trees and oak trees. Let me show you what's in here. Oh, that smells so funky. It smells, ah, so rich. And that is full of the mycelium that are going to produce fungi in the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be falling down there. Wow, that's amazing. Last year, this little flat plateau above that bank side where I was just on was full of seps. Absolutely heaving with them. And now, look at these. <laughs> It's just, oh, hedgehog fungus. That one looks like it's been affected by radiation or something, it's just gone berserk. There's another one. Look at that, man. The amount of nutrients that are in there is off the scale. I think that's pretty much it, look at that. That's a hefty lump of protein right there. Oh dear. It doesn't stop there, look at that. There's a lump there. There's a lump over there. There's a lump beyond those trees there. There's numerous great big lumps over there. <laughs> I'm gonna be busy. Uh, yeah, give me a couple of minutes and I'll show you what's in the basket. Look at that, man. Gee, Jesus. Have you ever seen such a vision of beauty? Look at that. Look at that. It's almost like chicken of the woods. It's so deformed. 
But that, believe it or not, is hedgehog fungus. Look at that, underneath. I think I may have to chop this one in half to get it cleaned up. But look at the size of that, man. Dear God. Amazing. You know, we're heading into a period where we're going to have problems with our food supply and nature is providing everything we need. No questions asked. All we have to do is understand. But most of us don't understand. So nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, gee, Jesus, look at that. Just look at that. That's probably enough to feed two or three people just there. Look at all of these ones. That actually looks like it's been cut off. In fact, that definitely has been cut off. So I'm just wondering if somebody's been in here. If they have, that's awesome. Because to my knowledge, nobody else comes into these woods. But if they have been into these woods and they've cut them off, they've cleaned them up on site, that means there's gonna be even more for next year. And I just love to think that somebody else is appreciating this bountiful harvest, which is free. How the hell am I gonna harvest that? Let's have a look. Okay, that's that one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that, man. You know, I'm not getting excited because there's so many of these. I'm getting excited because they're so useful. They're really nice tasting mushrooms or fungi. You know, they're not just bountiful. They're actually tasty as well. We have these all the time in like miso soup and all sorts of Japanese dishes that my daughter makes because she's a vegetarian. Whoops. So anything that I can go out and harvest is beneficial for her. Well, obviously, unless it's rabbits or fish or anything like that. But anything vegetative or fungi related that I can harvest is beneficial for her. And I can guarantee you the question you probably want to ask me is what do I think of vegetarianism? Well, I don't have a problem with it at all. You know, you can get enough nutrients, amino acids, all sorts of trace minerals and everything you need from a vegetarian diet, as long as you have cheese, milk and eggs. If you're a vegan, you're basically part of a cult. Now that may sound a little bit harsh, especially if I have any vegan viewers, but you can't live without the essential amino acids, without, without things that allow you to think, man. You know, it's no surprise that in the concentration camps, the first thing they do is take away the meat from the diet vegetarian diet and if possible they'll make it a vegan diet they'll make it easy to control us right-wing extremist meat eaters are a big problem <laughs> for the establishment <laughs> and i wouldn't have it any other way you know you have to have a good diet it's been known for centuries, if not millennia, that your gut is your second brain. So if you restrict it, that was very strange. It just sounded like a big footprint as if somebody was behind me. <laughs> and it's gone exceptionally quiet.
whoever or whatever it was obviously didn't like me ranting against veganism. <laughs> so quiet and so dark in here not because I'm a scaredy cat fanny but because I haven't seen any fungus of note in here I'm going to leave this area toot sweet now I can walk silently through a wood from having five decades of doing that <laughs> and when I'm walking I'm hearing things crack and pop behind me and around me. I've got to come back here on a night. This is super spooky. Now, I did promise you that I would let you have a look in the basket. So currently, that's what we've got. Look at that, man. We've got the setting sun over there. And we've got all that hedgehog fungus. <laughs> and that's a canny old weight in there. You know, and we've left some behind. That's so good. You know, last year, we had an unbelievable amount of hedgehog fungus up here in a perfect line. And can you see them going up that bank side? It's getting dark. But hopefully you can see them going all the way up there. <laughs> There they are, they're back again. Look at all of that, man. I'll probably leave most of them. I'll just pick the biggest ones. Whoa, look at that. Hedgehog fungus is all we found, but we found quite a lot of it. <laughs> and bear in mind, I have left a lot of the little ones to grow on. That's a pretty good haul. It's probably, oh God, I don't know. Feels like two or three kilos there. Maybe it's more. That's pretty good. That is a pretty good haul. For maybe an hour and a half's work or an hour and a half's walk. Um, but next time, I think I'll do better. And next time will be towards the end of the week. I'll give it another three or four days for the water that has fallen from the sky penetrate the ground for the cold to set off the fungi the dark mornings to set them off and I think we'll be in business because I walked way up there just that light patch above my head that is the clearing where there was oh, I don't know 15 20 kilos of porcini last year it was a ridiculous amount and I'm sure they'll come again this year so join me on my adventures <laughs> thanks for watching i'm going to put these in the dehydrator i'll save them for the next six to twelve months and i'll see you next time